Well, there are a number of troubling things that are taking place right now, uh, not only in the war with uh, between Russia and Ukraine, but also uh, Iran has basically slipped in under the uh, cover of the Russia-Ukraine uh, war. And I don't know if you've heard this or not, but U.S. officials have said that Iran is only a mere weeks away from nuclear from a nuclear breakthrough meaning they are only days away from having enough material, fusel material, to create a nuclear bomb and become a nuclear power. Now that's troubling, not because they're going to have a nuclear weapon, but because uh, Israel said they would never allow Iran to obtain a nuclear bomb. So in the very near future, if in fact they stay true to their word, there there's probably going to be an attack on uh, Iran's nuclear facilities. Again, that's just another example of wars and rumors of wars. And getting to the uh, Ukraine-Russian uh, war, here are a couple other very troubling uh, articles that I've written. Number one, Biden has requested $33 billion from Congress in Ukraine aid. Now, that's a tremendous amount of money, but I, but Russia has said that they will not tolerate any interference from outside of Ukraine and that they would use nuclear weapons against the West in a lightning fast strike if in fact that does occur. And here's another red line that uh, NATO has crossed that Russia said this is not going to happen. It says that Sweden and Finland have agreed to submit NATO applications, meaning they are uh, very close to becoming a NATO country. And again, why is this so important? Because these two countries are on Russia's border. And to raise the um, alarm bells even more, Russia was seen loading nuclear-capable missiles onto submarines heading to, to Ukraine. Now, as you know, last my last uh, video, I indicated that Russia has a number of low-grade nuclear weapons that are somewhere in the size of explosion of what was dropped on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki back in World War II. It's projected that between 10 and 20,000 people would die if, in fact, these bombs were unloaded upon a Ukraine city. And, you know, I heard a number of different experts say, when asked if they believed that uh, Putin would use nuclear weapons, every single one of them said, absolutely. And, you know, the Cold War has, for, between the, the West, or NATO, and Russia ha is in full swing, because here's an article that says that Russia has now cut off the gas to two NATO nations in a bid to divide the West. You know, I just got an article from the New York Times that the EU is ready to pass legislation that would phase out Russian gas and oil to the European Union. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but the bottom line is they are looking to put the squeeze on uh, the financial tap for the uh, Russian army as well. And, you know, here's an article from one of those experts. It says, Russia-Ukraine war latest. It says, former NATO commander warns that the West must gear up for war. Now, of course, with all the war rhetoric that's been going around, a lot of people are probably saying, well, you know what? Nobody's going to war because mutually assured destruction is on the line, and uh, I don't foresee Russia going to war with the United States. It's just too risky. Well, you know, the Bible does say that uh, just before the Lord comes back for his rapture, that the signs of the times would be earthquakes in diverse places, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and famines that will take place. Now, of course, we just, uh, we're just we in the middle of a, of a pandemic. Some experts are saying that we're in the tail end, but I don't necessarily believe that. It's also being predicted by, that by the end of this year or early 2023 that we will be in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be horrible here in the United States, but you have to remember that's only 4% of the world's population. Other parts of the world will be in dire straits over this uh, famine that's going to take place worldwide. And of course, we don't have to look very far to know that we are in the process of wars and rumors of wars. And as I said, the Bible says that at some point it's going to turn nuclear. If you look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 3 to 8, it states that when the second seal was opened, that peace was taken from the earth. And by the time we get to uh, verse 8, we know that one quarter of the world's population has been killed. Now, frankly, I believe that there will be a build up to all of these things. But before this massive war breaks loose, it appears that the Bible states that the Antichrist will come on the scene and bring peace uh, which is uh, described in Daniel 9 27 
And you know, one thing I want to point out before I go on is that that the world will be worried that pieces are going to be taken from the earth because the Bible says in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 that during this time, the world will be saying peace, peace, but sudden destruction will come. Now, it's very possible that, uh, like I said, just before this war breaks out, the Antichrist is, is able to bring peace to the world. But shortly after, the, a war does break out worldwide and multitudes of people will be killed. Now, certainly the world is very dangerous right now. And the threat that it could grow exponentially over the next few months, and, or whatever the case may be, as far as the Bible is concerned, seems to be a, a, a great threat. And let me, again, I've said this many times in uh, my other videos, but the Bible says that there will come a time there will be a final generation. And the Bible says that that generation wouldn't pass away until the Lord comes back for his second coming. Subtract seven years from that generation, or I'm sorry, from the second coming, and you will have a, a pretty near date for uh, the rapture of the church and, of course, the start of the tribulation period. But the one thing I'm trying to bring across is generally believe that when Israel became a nation back in 1948, that that set the clock for the last generation. And these signs that are mentioned in Matthew 24, starting with uh, verse 6, I'm going to start with anyway. And it says that, uh, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now I'm going to make a point about that. In and of itself, that means nothing. But couple that with the fact that Israel has become a nation again. And the signs that we're going to talk about here uh, to follow, the eyes of Christians should be opening. But following in uh, verse 6, it says, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So even though you see these things happening, and, some of, and many of them converging, don't be troubled as of yet. But moving into verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, wars and rumors of wars, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Again, another sign that's going to converge. And pestilence. Well, we've already, we're right there in the middle of that as well. And earthquakes. I, on a regular basis, on Gitter, give you earthquakes that take place uh, on a regular basis. Now, certainly, I believe it's going to get a lot worse as we get closer. But we're definitely having earthquakes in diverse places. And ending with verse 8, it says that uh, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, the point I want to try to bring up is this right here. If it was not for the uh, rebirth of Israel, these converging signs would not have the impact that they, they do right now. But the fact that Israel is back in their land and that Russia and Iran and actually Turkey as well have a foothold in Syria and potentially on Israel's northern border. And not only that, they also have a pact going. So they are military friends. But on top of that, you're looking at, as I said before, wars and rumors of wars pestilence, earthquakes, and famines that are all beginning to form at the same time, converging in these last days. And you know, let me throw something at you right here. These uh, converging signs may begin to fade because uh, there's nothing that the Bible doesn't indicate that they necessarily have to continue to remain on the scene. Now, of course, I believe that they're going to, be, they're going to uh, increase in intensity, but they don't necessarily have to. You know, the Lord only said that they would be signs. In other words, they are wake-up signals for the church. And if you look at verse 8, it says that all these are the beginning of sorrows. And, of course, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it, it gives the indication that we as Christians should not be uh, in the state of darkness as the world is, but that we are in light and we should see exactly what's going on. So right now, we as Christians should be looking at these signs and saying, Wow, Israel is back in their land. Pestilence, wars and rumors of wars, famines, and earthquakes are all converging at the same time. This should be a wake-up call that the Lord could very well be coming very, very soon, and maybe sooner than you think. But the takeaway for this is this: that you should not be in darkness. You should not be troubled. And you know, uh, verse 6 of Matthew 24 almost indicates, it seems to me, that we should let and we should watch it play out. And in watching it play out, we should be ready for what many believe to be the next step, which is the rapture of the church. So if there is a takeaway from this video, this, this is what I would take away. Number one, Israel is back in their land. And during this last generation, these signs that are indicated in Matthew 24, 6 through 8 are playing out and that we should not be troubled. 
But the fact that the Bible says don't be troubled does not mean that there's not going to be a massive war where many people are going to die and nuclear weapons will likely be used. Now I'm sure the, uh, on the minds of many that are listening is the concept of w- would Vladimir P- Putin actually use nuclear weapons in this uh, time of mutually assured destruction, especially with so many nuclear nations that would be involved in it, such as uh, the UK, of course the United States, and I believe France is also a holder of nuclear weapons. And of course let's not forget Russia who has the uh, largest stockpile of nuclear weapons on the planet. Now, of course, many might say, well, we've been down this road before. And I think in the end, fear and cooler heads will prevail. Well, I hope that you're right. But, uh, you know, if you have a comment on that, leave it down in the uh, comment section. But if we are where I think we are, and let's not forget about the rumors that uh, Vladimir Putin very well may either have Parkinson's or cancer or whatever the case may be. But he's definitely got some uh, mental health issues that uh, very well could bring this into a nuclear phase. And again, if you want to comment on that, uh, any information that you may have, put it down in the comment section. I'd like to hear it. And of course, uh, subscribe, get on my Gitter account. And if you'd like to uh, leave a donation with this ministry, you can go down to the description section. And certainly don't forget to pick up one of my books, Get My Tribulation Period Survival Guide in the Hands of Every Lost Loved One That You Know. I personally would use them as tracks and get them in the hands of your neighbors. Because I can tell you that they may not read it now, but I guarantee they'll be looking high and low for that book once the rapture takes place and the tribulation period begins. You certainly don't want the world to tell your lost friends and loved ones how they need to react once this happens. And of course, if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. 150,000 people are going to die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't make the mistake of uh, putting this off another day. I would encourage you to ask the Lord to save you, repent of your sins, believe that he died on the cross and rose again, and from this day forward, live for him. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.